Okay, greetings everybody. Carlton Flowers here with the Go Political channel. And I have been trying to produce this video for the last several days. And it is just turning out to be a monstrosity. There's no way I'm going to even be able to do this without just jumping in and breaking this up into 10 parts. But for the first topical video, we're going to jump into the local complete meltdown, crazy madness. Uh, this is this is politics to the third power uh, gone wrong in Dalton, Illinois, outside of Chicago, near the south side where I was born. Um, Tiffany Henyard, the mayor, and we're going to talk about the board of trustees. And in this video, we're going to first just focus on the four trustees who seem to be the good individuals that are fighting for the people, and that just happens to be Kiana Belter, Tammy Brown, Jason House, Brittany Norwood. Um, I was born in Chicago on the South Side, and so that's why when I discovered this whole mess from a Pink Book Lessons video, I've been obsessed with it ever since, and following it on the daily basis, just waiting for more information to come out. All right. And on this video, I must shout out Dela, Creme Dela, for the last two videos that she put out, which were beyond outstanding. Um, I would almost say she's on the forefront of breaking this information down, digging into past meetings and sharing insight from a very unique angle and exposing a lot of the psychological aspects of what we are seeing going on. Now, there's a lot of people that are also covering this. Um, shout out to Nate the Lawyer, Hannibal is Hungry, the Real Late Night Crew. Um, I usually watch Real Late Night Crew uh, live streams and comment. I've been on Shawan's live streams and, of course, De La Krim De La. We also have the Black Conservative Perspective, uh, Gospel Chops Vlog. And the lead attorney has touched on it just a little bit. Okay, so that's enough background I was going to have a beginning video to get those of you up to speed who don't know about this topic. And if you don't know, I don't know where you have been hiding because this is now international news. This, this whole story and what is going on, there's an international audience and the overwhelming majority of the people are in support of the four trustees that I mentioned. So I'm just going to start by covering the psychological stuff because that's where I think we need to dig in more. And I've got advice that I want to give that I think would help out because it just hurts my heart to see the citizens of this township held hostage and to look at the hostilities that are going on. Hostilities. It has gone far and beyond just corrupt politics, but now we have hostilities. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a little psychological stuff and give you my angle, talk a little bit about my experience in dealing with narcissists and what I can recommend, and then share some ideas that I think have yet to be explored. And I just pray that the trustees see this video or someone in the village of Dalton sees this video and says, hey, here are some ideas. Here's something that we can use as a tool to try to get this situation uh, brought to a close. When I heard trusty, I believe it was uh, Kiana Belcher, I think, on one of the news reports, and she said, nobody is going to come in and save us from this. We are all alone. That broke my heart. And it's so sad to see that those that have the capability, who have jurisdiction over, this over the township and the city, are not making moves, or at least not doing it in an expeditious manner, to the detriment of the people. How many millions of dollars must be lost before someone with authority comes in to shut this whole mess down? All right, let's get to, let's talk about um, psychology. Okay, so I'm going to go through some definitions, some things that come to mind, and then we're going to try to relate that to this situation. The first one, of course, uh, pathological liar. And I have dealt with 
individuals with this problem. It is someone who has no control over chronic lying. In fact, I will go so far as to tell you that a pathological liar will repeat the lies to the point where they nearly believe them themselves, okay? Depending on how sick they are, it can become a fantasy that they believe to be real. A narcissist. Of course, we have identified a certain individual as a narcissist. That's a person who has excessive interest or... Uh, ex excessive interest in or admiration of themselves. Next is NPD. That is Narcissistic Personality Disorder, a mental health condition in which a person believes they are better than anyone and everyone else. Sociopath. I believe the individual falls under this area, and I have studied this in depth for a long time. A sociopath, quick definition, this is just mine, a person with a personality dis disorder manifesting itself in extreme antisocial attitudes and behavior and a lack of conscious, a lack of conscious. Some people say that's the same as saying an individual has no soul, no remorse. We're going to get into that. Um, lack of empathy goes with sociopathic behavior. Okay, so when we say lack of empathy, we're talking about something that we often see in sociopaths and psychopaths, all right? Now, two psychological terms particularly associated with a lack of empathy are sociopathy and psychopathy. Let's break down psychopathy. That comes from the Greek word, the roots, the two Greek words, psyche, which refers to the mind, and pathos, which refers to suffering. So basically that's saying mind sickness. All right. Now, um, narcissistic supply. This is going to be one that's very interesting. Uh, and De La Creme De La pointed out something and stole my thunder that I had not seen this point made uh, in any videos that I had seen. But I'm going to reinforce the point that she made in the last video that I think was the overarching point and one of the reasons why the trustees can't get anywhere and are not able to control the situation. Narcissistic supply refers to the constant supply of attention and admiration needed by narcissists. That's the simple definition, but there's one portion of that that is left out, and we'll get into that. Um, gaslighting, that's a form of psychological manipulation in which the abuser attempts to sow self-doubt and confusion into their victim's minds. Okay, so here is the biggest challenge and problem that I see is a board of trustees and people in the administration, uh, especially the good trustees and citizens of the town, the village, who are trying to reason with a narcissist. Can you reason with a narcissist? No, you cannot. You cannot. Logic and reason are not properties, are not functions of the narcissistic mind. It's not in their behavior. If you catch yourself trying to reason and use logic with a narcissist, you are going to fail miserably. I had a friend who was a pathological liar, a sociopath, and a narcissist. And a lot of us did not identify that until we had been boiled. You know, the story goes, if you put a frog in lukewarm water and you turn up the heat slowly, you'll boil them to death because they can't detect the temperature change and won't jump out. Scientifically, that's not true. But the story sounds good. But that's the best way to describe what happens to us when the narcissist unknowingly grabs us and puts us under their spell. So this individual that I know, I had known this person over a course of five years and helped them to build a business and then watched it burn to the ground. And this person was like Tiffany Henyard all over again. <laughs> it was interesting. But at the end, when I had identified the behaviors as narcissistic behavior, and when this person had shared with me multiple stories of childhood trauma, I put two and two together. And then the one thing that I have learned in my research is that the only way you can deal with a narcissist is to cut them out of your life completely and not communicate with them at all whatsoever. 
Now, when you got the head of government that is a narcissist or your boss, it's not possible to cut that person out. Now you're going to have to deal. And it's not going to be easy. But you better know what you're doing. And in fact, when De La Creme De La had mentioned that when you are uh, crossing the path of a rabid, mean dog and they're growling at you and wanting to attack, they can smell fear. They can look at your facial expressions. They can know by your tone or see you shaking and know this is a person that I can take down. The narcissist is a pit bull. They have the ability to detect weakness in human beings. Most human beings, the majority, maybe 95%, maybe 99%, don't have what it takes to deal with the pit bull. They don't, period. I was watching Dr. Phil. I'm a big fan of Dr. Phil. I like watching that crazy show. They had a narcissist on. Well, it was a couple. Uh, and I believe one of the spouses was a narcissist. And they were trying to fix this person. Had all the family there. And Dr. Phil said something that shocked me. Dr. Phil, with all his degrees, he said that he does not have the ability to fix or rehab a narcissist and that it is above his pay grade. Now, can you imagine that if a person who is nationally known and has a live, you know, a television audience, a national audience, and the background in behavioral studies, who would say that Transforming or rehabilitating a narcissist is above his pay grade. That lets you know how serious this is. This is why we watch the trustees and the people get gaslit constantly where we just see the mayor taking a flamethrower to their face night after night. They're just getting beat up, eaten alive, chewed up and spit out, manipulated, and all the while... This person is getting their way and spending the city into millions and millions, millions and millions of dollars, millions of dollars of debt with no ability to tap the brakes, with no ability to put her in check. You can't stop watching the videos when you, you just see the way that, uh, uh, what's the word? Exact method, she will gaslight, turn things around, deflect, and blame. The same way, meeting after meeting, and it always works. So what do you do? Uh, I have ideas on what could be done and then what should be done as a whole to at least Turn the tide and give you guys some power. Number one thing is that I see to be a big mistake. And again, De La, Creme De La beat me to the punch on this one. She noticed that they are too much in their emotions. When you display emotions to a narcissist or on that one video when we saw uh, or heard the slight tremble in the voice of Jason House and the narcissist, the pit bull will... Pick up on that, and there they go in for the kill. When you're displaying emotions, you're toast. You don't have a chance. Any time you use words like, this don't make no sense. This has just got to stop. We are so sick and tired. When you are exasperated, you are done. You have set yourself up for the kill. You cannot display emotions to a narcissist because when you do, they understand the inner functions of your mind and they know how to play you. When you shut off the emotions with a narcissist, they will freak out because they have no way to predict and understand what's going on in your mind and know how to play you like a puppet on the strings because that's what this person is doing with the board, playing them like puppets. Now, every now and then I do see where the trustees get a win, a small win here and there, but overall you're not winning. Now, besides the fact that you cannot show emotion, you have to go deadpan. Do you remember on Star Trek, Dr. Spock, all right? What was the main difference between Dr. Spock and human beings? Well, if you said lack of emotional understanding, 
and the ability to possess emotions, you were correct. Dr. Spock was 100% logic and reason. Before you guys go into those board meetings, you should all give each other the Dr. Spock sign to remind yourselves to get out of your emotions. You should be like this, plain, simple, and robotic, and not let her, it's like showing her your hand, your cards. You're just showing your cards when you're displaying your emotions so you can get whipped and beat up and abused, chewed up and spit out. So no emotions. Um, another thing that I know in my experience is that you never call out a narcissist in a meeting. Never, ever, 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 ever. When you call them out and present the facts, they are in control because they don't live in reality. We have to remember, we're dealing with a, a person who is a sociopath and they live in fantasy land and they use the psychological, or I'm sorry, pathological lying to create the fantasy land that they want to live in. When you present them with facts and get them told, when you call them to the floor and you get them told, you better back up because the flamethrower is going to come at you and they're going to use whatever facts and information that you presented to get them told and they're going to turn it back on you. That's what we're seeing meeting after meeting. Time and time again. You present facts and she flips it around, twists things ever so carefully because she is brilliant. She is brilliant when it comes to the skill of just tweaking a few little facts, tweak a few little facts, insert a couple little white lies, and then flip it back in such manner with uh, the emotion and passion that she's so shamed that she has just exposed that you are lying. And then the public, especially the village idiots. I've noticed that you have a percentage of people in that city that are village idiots. And you'll see them clapping in the background. Oh, it just hurts me to see the village idiots clapping and supporting her when she does this. When she does this. But know that she's going to take your facts Know that she's going to take whatever you said that proves that she was in the wrong. She's going to turn around, tweak a few things, lie, and blast you with it. You got to get more creative than that. And that's a video for another time. You have to come around the back door. You cannot confront them directly. It does not, and it will not work. Um, what's a few other things as far as being in those meetings? I've never seen you deploy silence. When you deploy silence in your few of words, the narcissist will freak out. You can control them. You can have. You can make them have a mental breakdown when you have no facial expressions, when your words are few, and then when you deploy silence. Sometimes it's just a, I mean, if you have the floor and then you just stop and you, and you just do something like that where it's like you're busted and you kind of look at the person like this and then you just pause and use silence. You can make a narcissist have a complete meltdown, okay? But there needs to be a deeper dive into how you are interacting with that narcissist while you're in your meetings. We'll get more into that. But something else that I wanted to offer um, in this first video, which I know this is going to be long. I apologize for the length of it. Uh, but there are a few things that I, d I did want to talk about um, as it relates to... Uh, when Kiana Belcher said that there ain't no help coming in for us, we're not going to get saved. So here, think about this. You have an international audience. You have people rooting from you from all over the world. How crazy is that? You need to leverage your international audience. There is help out there. I'm so sorry that the state of Illinois does not find it necessary to save you guys. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that the ruling authorities there, those who have jurisdiction over what is going on in the city, that they will not move. I'm so sorry that a certain black female with the power to shut this down won't move because of, which is a topic for another video, we've got this whole uh, 
political idea that black women cannot go after other black women in power because they don't want to take power away from ourselves or slow down the movement. And so we have this unwritten code. But then with the new information that just came out, now we have a new line to draw. Will you as a black woman allow another black woman to get away with something that harms a third party, another black woman, in the most horrible way. Are we going to draw the line there? Are we giving carte blanche approval to a person in power? A person in power? In power? Y'all black. Y'all black. I can't get that out of my mind. That whole, uh, that whole clip just turned my stomach and her claiming to be Martin Luther King's dream. No, she's the nightmare. Well, anyway, are we going to now say that in the story that just broke about the woman who was taken advantage of by a certain member of the board, allegedly, are we going to say that turning a, a deaf ear and a blind eye to that is standing up for the black woman? So, how far can we go with keeping this code that a black woman in power cannot go after a black woman in power. It's eating itself. Now it's causing harm and damage to black women because we won't stick to the rule of law and call out nonsense when we see it. Now with the whole allegiance thing, there was another point that De La Creme De La read my mind and brought up that we have allegiance to the wrong people because street urchins... Street urchins, the people in the ghettos who are criminal minded, they're not a part of my culture. I come from educated black culture that has values, morals, and certain principles. Okay. Um, those who lack those values, morals, and principles are not in my culture. So I would have no problem saying that you're not someone that I would bend rules for because you're not even in my race. Much in the same way that there are Africans who don't see me as a part of their race or even Jamaicans don't claim us black Americans. Our culture is unique, but within that culture, we are not to be married to ghetto. That's a whole nother culture. That's a whole nother culture. It has to stop and be called out. Okay, back to the ideas. Here's what I think we are leaving on the table. Why are you not leveraging people, celebrities, okay, that may be able to step in and bring this to an even bigger stage? What about calling the Dr. Phil show? Do you think Dr. Phil hasn't been made aware of this situation? I bet you he has. This would be a heyday. I, <laughs> I couldn't see Dr. Phil turning this down. Where are the black celebrities in the world? Where's Oprah? Not that that would do any good, but list every black celebrity that you know and start to make contacts. But here's a better idea. Besides utilizing the celebrities who have big platforms and not just, I mean, I mentioned the YouTube celebrities. We have excellent YouTube content creators that are on this, exposing the situation and are helping to bring it to a point where somebody's going to have to take action. But we have not seen the big celebrities in Hollywood or political celebrities step in to state their opinion. Now, one thing that is going on in my old neighborhood in South Chicago, which is sick and disgusting and depressing, is that they're flying in illegal aliens or bussing them in, flying, bussing, whatever you call it. And this is a topic for another video, but for some strange reason, now it's okay to break the law, bring people into a city, push black people out of the way, take from their resources and give the taxpayer money to illegal aliens, right? Give them the parks, give them the old schools, give them the boys and girls clubs. And what has come as a result? They said enough and they're taking it to an extreme. 
I know that Southside Chicago and your suburb is a Democratic stronghold. The Democratic Party is a cult that has control over you. And that is why you have no power in this situation. Because your cult has power through the office of the president. Now, the people in Southside Chicago woke up and decided if we're going to shake this up and change things, we're going to have to cross party lines and get out of our cult that has control over our people and bends us over and does whatever damage to us that they would like to. And knowing that we won't say anything, we're going to cross the party line and appeal to the other party. You have people in Southside Chicago saying that they are going to vote out the Democratic mayor, the Democratic governor, and vote for Donald Trump. For Donald Trump? Are you kidding? That, that is uh, something that I never saw coming. Never saw coming. Not to say that they are ready to join the Republican Party, which is just another political cult. Not to say that they completely support Donald Trump but they know that they have no chance of changing the situation as long as the dirty politicians are in charge that are a part of the party in control. Have you thought about reaching across the lines? What can you imagine would happen, would happen if you reach cross party lines? I noticed something that when your adversary created the foundation in her own name to steal money and collect tens of thousands of dollars to support her habits. I noticed that during the March where she spent up all the money on bikes and cars and hotel rooms and food and parties, I noticed that she has already utilized this to a certain degree. What did she say to the news? Well, when we walked through the Republican uh, counties, we had tons of support because everybody know that council is something that, that every family is experiencing. And we got support from Republican counties. So she is crossing over the line to pull more support and bolster, bolster her situation of power. Why are you not doing the same? Get radical. You're going to have to get creative and radical and save yourselves. You know what? The old Republican adage that you have to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. My parents hated that phrase. They were blue blood Democrats from the jump. But my grandfather from Mississippi with a sixth grade education who was a junk man and a carpenter my grandpa loved that phrase and he loved Ronald Reagan. And that used to always be a point of discussion and arguments in our family. But in this situation, you're going to have to employ that. You have to pull up yourselves by your own bootstraps because you see that your party is in power, the Democratic Party, and they're going to leave you high and dry. So it's time to get outside of the box, think outside of the lines, and employ some strategies that have not been employed before. And last but not least, this might be the most important point. And this is for your city council meetings. You need a coach. You need to stop going into those meetings and getting toe up from the flow up by this professional narcissist who has you read like a book. You need to seek the assistance of someone that has a strong background in sociopathy, psychopathy, in narcissism, in childhood disorders, childhood trauma, okay? Someone with a strong mental health background and also a background in strategy. You need to take an expert into every single meeting and have the guidance from someone who is trained to help you all deal with this individual. If you all had to put money in a hat to pay for someone to be a consultant, to be there with you in those meetings, then it's worth it. Because it's not working out on your own. 
I have so much more, but I'm going to just have to stop this video where it is. And again, this was not supposed to be the format of my first topical video for Go Political, but boy, did we go there. Did we go there? Did we go there? We went there. This is one of the most uh, hot political uh, issues going on in the country today. And I think it even eclipses the Fonnie Willis situation down in Atlanta, Georgia. So thank you for watching if you did watch. If you enjoyed this talk and you want more, let me know in the comments. Let me know. Like, subscribe, share with a friend. I am a very busy individual. I have multiple businesses. I'm an engineer. I have my own engineering consulting business. I own a body shop. I am a marketing person. I do marketing consulting. Um, I also have a construction business. I'm a general contractor uh, and other things. I can't even think of all the other stuff. Plus, I'm a physical fitness trainer. I stay busy, guys. I stay busy. But I will make time for this. And I ask for your support so that we can go political together. That's all I got for now. This is Carlton and... I am out.